GI complications. Um, I told my coworker her picture was going to be in here and I didn't let her see it though. So really quickly, this we see all the time, the patient's hospitalized and they end up breaking with diarrhea. But it's well recognized in human medicine um, and it can be really mild or pretty severe. Um, the gut is considered a shock organ. What that means is when uh, the, the body is in shock, um, everything will um, vasoconstrict and push all the blood to the vital organs, the heart and the brain, and then it leaves something like the gut um, taking the brunt of the hit of that. So when things are all said and done, we get some pretty G bad GI signs. Um, we can start antimicrobials. Oh, I'm sorry. Complications that we cause are by administering antibiotics. Yes, we can administer Metro, but things like um, Clavamox, these cause you know, GI upset, opioid use, and that's well known to cause urine retention and um, constipation. Um, dietary changes, how much are we feeding them? I, I know that if I don't pay attention, I'll overfeed the patient that's eating well, and I'll overfeed them canned food sometimes if I'm in a rush. Um, they never get at home. They're gonna eat as much as you give them. Um, and then poorly managed stress and anxiety. Um, it's a fine line. We don't want to over sedate our patients, so they aspirate, but we don't want them to be so stressed that they break with a really horrible HGE. Um, clinical signs, it's not just diarrhea, but it can be things like a decreased appetite. It can be, um, it can be constipation, urine retention, the patient that just won't eat um, in hospital no matter what we're trying and everything looks good and, and you bring them everything, but maybe, it's, maybe this is this complication. Um, we also can see this present as just abdominal discomfort. Um, and they can regurgitate, and then we get into this big cycle of, um, of problems where they, you know, they, they, they end up aspirating. Um, and I think it's pretty common for us to say, and we can all say, we see patients come in for one thing, and then they develop another. So that's really the point of all this. Prevention and treatment, limit stress and anxiety. Um, you know, there's things like trazodone or gabapentin. You know, if they're a painful patient, maybe that's a good drug of choice. Avoid overfeeding the patient. Don't be like me. Don't give them everything because you just like to spoil them. That one there, well, <laughs> doesn't want me to ever stop that, though. Um, consider asking the owners to bring their own food. Um, we can also do bland diet options. Um, we have things like probiotics. Um, sometimes they're palatable, like the cats that won't eat anything. Maybe they'll eat it with sprinkled on food. Just try, try pro probiotics. Um, and then there's certainly medications that we can administer um, to kind of limit, limit the side effects of this. But there are so many times that patients come in for something that's a really, really significant disease. The patient that's here, Michelle, for IMHA and here forever, and then we just, we can't send them home because they won't eat and the, the, the owners can't medicate them. That might be actually something going on. So what can we do as the veterinary nurse to try to make them more comfortable so they eat in hospital, so that they don't develop horrible diarrhea, um, and that they can go home sooner? Because I think that uh, a shorter length of stay in the hospital would be beneficial to the owners, they're more likely to spend money, you know, in the future, that pet less likely to euthanize. Um, and then I just briefly want to talk to you about why we're, why we're talking about all this. Um, this little pet, um, it's really adorable, a little like alien sci-fi, uh, but he really represents to me, you know, the extremes who go to nursing care, how hard we, we try for our patients, you know, if they're losing, they're losing heat through their ears. Maybe we should make some earmuffs for them and a little sweater out of a stockinette. Um, but it's really what we do. So um, when you're feeling like you're just checking, checking TPRs nonstop, um, you, you're, be aware that you're learning to pick up on more subtle signs. All these things that we talk about with aspiration and fluid overload, that's really what the doctors are asking you to look for. They are gonna certainly value you as a technician or a nurse if you can catch those things early. Um, also, we're, we're responsible for handling and maintaining all the IV lines, drains, tubes. That's a really big responsibility, and that's the things that are introducing the infections in these patients. Um, we're responsible for um, implementing their feeding, their refeeding, when they have really horrible diseases. 
Um, we do things like the patient positioning, medicating, and all we're responsible for all the environmental exposures.